How's it going everyone? So when I first took organic chemistry, I was terrified. It has this stigma around it that everyone knows it's this hard class, it's the hardest pre-med class you're gonna have to take, and everyone fears it, everyone cannot wait to get it over with. Let me be one of the first people to tell you that it's really not as bad as everyone says it is. Everyone goes into it with this stigma and it's just developed this reputation that has made it so scary that everyone assumes it has to be bad. And so when they take the class, they have this idea that it has to be hard or it needs to feel like it's hard. And that's not really how you should think of a class. If you go into a class thinking it's gonna be really, really hard, you're gonna attribute you know, maybe your failures to the class just being hard rather than maybe your poor study habits or not enough time going into studying for the class. Now there's not just one way to do well in a class. This is just how I did well in OCHEM. This is what worked for me. And this is kind of what I told people I did when they would ask me like, how am I studying? You know, How am I doing well? And why do you not look stressed all the time? Now I was always very consistent with the way I studied. The night before every single lecture, I went ahead and I looked at what we were gonna go over the next day. So for example, say we were we're gonna go over nucleophiles and electrophiles. I would immediately go to Khan Academy and watch their entire module on nucleophiles and electrophiles. So for those of you who don't know, Khan Academy is a free resource that has tons of videos, tons of modules, um, and practice questions for pretty much every subject you could think of. Anything from accounting to chemistry to even MCAT prep is all on Khan Academy, it's all free. It's this really awesome nonprofit organization. If you're early on in college, Hopefully it's not too late and you can utilize it because I used it for so many classes, but especially organic chemistry. So like I was saying, before every single lecture, the night before, I would go on and I would start watching the Khan Academy videos for the subject that we were gonna be going over. Now, when I say watching, I mean just watching. I didn't pull out a pen and paper. I didn't take notes. I would lay in bed, you know, as if I was getting ready for bed and I wanted to fall asleep. I would get in bed pull my laptop in bed and just start watching the videos. Even if I was drowsing off, I would kind of be listening. And why was this so important? Because this is your first exposure to the material. You're not taking any notes, so I wasn't stressing myself out. I was just kind of watching and being like, oh, okay, I see. I see what an electrophile is. I, I see what they're doing with it. Interesting, interesting, like very cool. This is what I'll be going over tomorrow, done. Eventually I would fall asleep and that would be that. So the cool thing about watching Khan Academy while I was falling asleep was it actually kind of helped me develop a really good sleep schedule because I started associating watching OCHEM videos with falling asleep. So eventually while I was watching the videos, I kind of just doze off, wake up the next morning, you know, time for school and I had learned something, but I'd also gotten to fall asleep while doing it. And people underestimate passive learning. Everyone assumes you have to sit there with a notebook and you have to just you know, take notes the entire time to actually learn. Rather, it can really be helpful just to give yourself an exposure and just to see the material versus having to stressfully sit there and write notes the entire time. So by watching Khan Academy at night, passively while I was falling asleep, I was able to get that exposure and get a pretty good sleep schedule. So come the next morning, I'm in class, I pull out my notebook and now we're learning the material that I had seen the night before passively while watching Khan Academy. Now the benefit of this was now it's not the first time that I've seen the material. I can just pay attention, I can listen and lecture, I can take notes, but I'm not stressed about keeping up with what we're going over because I've seen it before. And rather than being like, okay, that's that's a neutrophile, that's an electrophile, I can be like, oh, that's that's what they were talking about in the video I watched last night. So now this is the second time I've seen the material. So rather than being stressed and not, you know, trying to keep up with what we're doing in class, I can just take notes, I can nod my head, I can say, yeah, that's what we talked about, or that's what they talked about last night in Khan Academy. So after class, you go home and you sit down and now it's time to do some of the reading, do some of the homework. This is gonna be exposure number three. This will be the third time within a 24 hour period that you are seeing this material. So going back, I'm gonna open the chapter on nucleophiles and electrophiles. I'm gonna be like, all right, let's read about it. And rather than being like, oh man, this is so dense. I hate reading. This is taking forever to get through. I feel like I'm just glazing over and not actually understanding. You have a background. You have you know, the, the Khan Academy you watched the night before, the passive learning, and you have the lecture from that day. So now you can read it. You can maybe look a little bit further into the subject but you're not really stressed out because you understand, because you've seen it now for the third time. You go ahead and you do the homework, you refer back to the reading, maybe back to your notes, but you will feel so much more prepared by having multiple exposures to the material. And that's why I start with Khan Academy before I go and see the lecture, 
and then do the reading and the homework after the lecture. I felt so confident by the end of each day because I felt like I had seen the material enough that by the time I would come to the next lecture, I was ready to move on and learn something new. So at this point, you're gonna repeat the cycle. You're gonna finish your reading, you're gonna finish your homework, and you know, go enjoy the rest of your day, do whatever. Uh, maybe study further classes or you know, don't be a hermit, go outside and enjoy the world. You're gonna repeat the cycle, you're going to you know, open Khan Academy at night before you go to bed, you've brushed your teeth, you're laying in bed, and watch the next subject or go on YouTube and watch the next subject, whichever resource you end up having to use, and do the exact same thing over again. So at this point, you're keeping yourself completely caught up with material. The biggest problem people have in OCHEM is falling behind. The number one tip that everyone says is don't fall behind in OCHEM. And by doing this, by exposing yourself the night before, during the lecture, and right after the lecture, is what will keep you on track so by the time you get up to the week leading up to the exam, you feel totally fine. Now, when it came to mechanisms, there's another thing I specifically did that helped me memorize mechanisms and reagents over the long term, over maybe like the four weeks that you're learning those for the exam. So what I would do is I would write down all my mechanisms and all my reagents on my mirror right over here. And I'll show it in a clip right now. So I would write down all the mechanisms, all the reagents, and it would all be listed out and every single day when you get up and you, you know, you've got clothes out of your closet or you're just kind of in your room, you are constantly seeing it. Now, if you don't have a mirror or anything, you know, you can get a whiteboard. I recommend getting one of those. So now let's get to the week before your exam. Leading up to the exam, you've stayed caught up, you're not falling behind, and now you have this huge advantage because what you can really do now is just focus on some of the harder material that will be on this exam because you're not one of those students that has to catch up on homework or catch up on readings or anything. At this point, what I did was I would review homework questions, but the main thing here is I wouldn't redo the homework because I believe that was a waste of time. With the availability heuristic, I felt like every single time I was doing the homework rather than learning it, I was just remembering kind of the answer. So I'd you know, write down the mechanism or write down the reagent and I, it wasn't really a learning tool. So instead what I started doing was to save time, I would just kind of go through my homework questions and you know maybe hold my hand over the answer really quick and just be like, okay, cool, that was the answer or that's what I did, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So my professor had old practice exams and I know a lot of professors do this, especially with organic chemistry. They'll have previous semester exams posted outside their window. Now, if you don't have old exams that you guys can reference, make sure to just go on YouTube and look up some like exam level questions because at this point, practice makes perfect. The biggest thing with OCHEM is to keep on practicing. The more practice problems you do, the more reagents, the more mechanisms, the better you're gonna get. It's not really one of those subjects that you can just kind of read the book and understand, but the more you draw things out, the more you remember associations between things, the easier the class is. And so with this method, with always staying caught up and having multiple exposures to the material, I always felt really prepared going into my exams. Now we're gonna to get to the last stretch. So at the end of OCHEM 2, you're gonna take an exam called the ACS. And this is basically a, uh, a nationwide exam. It's standardized, it's not written by the professors, it's written by a board, and you're gonna to have to take it. And my professor used it as her final exam. Uh, some professors might do it differently, but the nice thing about this exam is there is practice material provided by the people who make the exam. Um, I don't remember exactly how much it costs. I can go ahead and look it up and I can put the link in the description below, but it's basically a, uh, a practice exam with a bunch of practice sections based off of a whole bunch of different questions from different, you know, different subjects and different uh, fields of organic chemistry. So what I did was I got the practice material and I did it in sections. Uh, each. Each section had maybe, it was like 12 to 15 questions a section, and I think there was like a total of 12 uh, content categories. And so there's a pretty good amount of material. So what I did over about the two weeks leading up to the final exam was I would mainly go through that, and I would do sections of it, and um, I would do it in full sections. I would do all you know 12 to 15 questions, depending on how many were in the section. And then after finishing the section, I would go back, and I would go and grade myself and see what I got wrong. At that point, I would mark it wrong, review the explanation. They all have explanations, which is super, super helpful. And then you'd go ahead and you'd do the rest of the sections. And eventually, maybe over a couple days, you would have the entire document done. Now, at this point, what I did was I would go back and I would redo the questions that I got wrong. You're gonna notice you probably can get a lot of the ones you got wrong right, whether it's just because you remember the answer or because, you know, the explanation that you read prior when you tried it the first time stuck in your head and now you know the answer. But you'll go through all the ones you got wrong and that'll be that. So now you've gone through the entire, you know, the entire practice set once, 
and you've done all the ones you got wrong twice. At this point, I would wait a few days, maybe study for other classes as well, wait a few days, and I would completely redo the entire document from beginning. The entire ACS practice, I would do it from the beginning to end completely again. You're gonna notice you're gonna get a whole lot less wrong, you're gonna feel a lot more confident, and the ones that you do get wrong again on the second take, you can go ahead and reread the explanations and maybe that will help isolate you on which ones to get right. I know at that point I felt like I knew which subjects I felt really good in and which ones I needed to maybe look at some other resources for. But the most important thing was I felt confident, I felt good. I spent all of OCHEM 1 and all of OCHEM 2 being caught up because I was just consistent, um, a little bit of time every day, doing the Khan Academy, the YouTube, and um, you know going through the class and homework after and then it's time to take the ACS you're gonna notice it's very similar to the practice material that they put out to me it felt a lot easier than the exams I had taken in OCHEM 1 and 2 just because I felt like those were more in-depth they were a little bit harder whereas the ACS is a little bit more broad and kind of just wants to test to see that you know did you retain some of this stuff did you you know understand the material now you're done with OCHEM and so the reason that this study regimen really helped me was because I always felt like I was caught up I was always reviewing the material a little bit ahead of time passively and then I would study a little bit harder the next day and then review the next day's material and by staying caught up it reduces so much stress and I think that's a lesson you can definitely take with you to pretty much all your classes by reviewing material a little bit ahead of time and by staying caught up every single day you'll notice rather than cramming hours and hours before your exams and you know overnights before your OCHEM final you're gonna feel pretty confident. You're gonna feel like you put in a little bit of work every day and now you're kind of just ready to take the exam. And people would always ask me like, why do you look so relaxed? It's because I was, you know, I had a regimen and I, I knew exactly how I was gonna study for every exam and I knew my study plan for each day. It wasn't a lot of time out of each day and I was able to manage to stay caught up just by keeping that consistent over my entire OCHEM 1 and 2 material. And then, you know, moving on to other classes like biochemistry, they just felt so much easier. They felt like I had a lot more time because I didn't have to spend as much time studying. And I just kind of used a very similar regimen where I'd read a little bit ahead or watch a couple videos ahead, review in class, do the homework or review after. And then, you know, you have so much free time that everyone tells you you're not going to have. So like I said, this is just how I study for the class. This is what worked for me. And this is how I managed to pull a pretty chill A in the class and not be too stressed out during. Everyone learns different. Everyone has different study methods. And this is just what worked for me when I took OCHEM. So in the description below, you're gonna find links to this study plan that I kind of talked about over the video. And I'll link to Khan Academy and some of the more helpful YouTube videos that I watched or YouTube creators that I watched while I was taking OCHEM. So if you have any extra questions or you guys just want advice, make sure to comment below or DM me here on YouTube or even my Instagram, I will reply. I, will just, I just wanna help you guys out and make sure that OCHEM is as relaxed and as non-distressful as it was for me. Um, and, to kind of, and to kind of get rid of this you know, the stigma that OCHEM is supposed to be super, super hard. Any class is manageable as long as you manage your time wisely. So anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.